Hi everybody, so I want to break down this effect for you. Uh, I did it with Typeflow and 3ds Max and it was rendered with Redshift. Um, it's a very nice effect. It's really simple to set up and it's, it has a different approach than another tutorial I saw when I post this. I will link I will I will leave the link below so you can see it. So let's talk about my approach. Uh, as you can see we have some shapes deforming and they have some kind of rules. They don't bend too much. Uh, they stay apart from each other. They are always try to organize themselves somehow to fit in and there is very clean so the shape is clean nothing is um, I don't know there's no glitches in the geometry and, and that that was my main goal building this so let's talk about it here you can see uh, the the simulation uh, before I apply some things uh, on top of it. So let's see exactly how it is. This is like this. This, this is the whole simulation. They are circles and they are uh, colliding each other and then they are being affected by another force here at the end. Just to add, in, just to add a, a little extra detail uh, to the simulation. So what we are trying to achieve exactly is a spline. So let me see here. See how we can see this. Uh, yes, here this is what we're trying to achieve: splines. And then after we have these splines, we can apply an extrude modifier, of course. Uh, after this, I am applying a turbo smooth, uh, um, and they are like softening everything. I I did it because when I am doing the close-ups, I need more details at, at the edges. You know, uh, I don't want to, to see this angular, this low poly thing. So this is good. Then I am I'm applying a cap hole modifier the cup holes is very effective it's really good it's adaptable and it's completely procedural and it works perfectly it's making a beautiful job after this i'm applying a chamfer of course these chamfers uh, will add some problems to the surface like this he's trying to make every normal in the geometry so it's kind of weird here it's balancing every normal to fix this we are we are oh, i'm adding a waiter normals on top of it and the waiter normal takes some time but it fix everything this is the complete result this is perfect in a geometry level now at this point it's slow for uh, building frame to frame but you I, I, I only turn it on in the render process. Then I have a material by element modifier that allows me to randomize materials in a distribution from 0 to 5. And I think I have here a multi material with 5 materials. There it is. What is budget? So that's the whole magic in a modifier level. So let's jump in. Uh, type flow to see what's going on in there and how the simulation is set up. Let's leave this like this and let's bring type flow to the game. So, with type flow, everything is particles. So, we need to think about these as particles. Of course, these particles are being spawning uh, from somewhere. And so I, I designed, let me freeze this for a second. I have designed these circles here. 
those are simple circles. Uh, uh, every every circle is placed manually, just uh, duplicating it. And we have a normal circle and a normalized plane on top to have more uh, knots. Okay, so I'm using these circles to spawn my particles in die flow. Let's see how it goes. Let me, see, let me turn off all of this. Okay, I don't need this anymore. And this is the, the main thing. Particles being spawned by the circles. And they are using the knots. That's why I'm using the normalize. Now I have this, of course no, nothing happens. Then I am adding a, a particle uh, physics. But why I'm doing this? Because when they start to move, they need to collide each other. Every particle will be colliding. And automatically they are using the shape radius. And the shape is this. This is the shape. I'm not touching anything related to the scale, so the shape would remain the same, the default. I'm watching this uh, as a sprite, because the sprites show you the the size. If you keep it like small dots or large dots or pixels, you can't see the, the actual size. But the sprite show it. So this is a very good way and it's very fast because they are like cardboards, 2D cardboards in the 3D space. And they are very well organized. Uh, it's not 3D, but it's a very good representation of everything. If you don't know too much of Typhlo, this could be a, a very good explanation of why using sprites is a good option most of the time to the beginning for the beginning so what else uh, let's jump to the movement because all of these first modifiers here they are here because of reason so uh, first of all i add a fine target what's the fine target the fine target is trying to push these particles to find a place uh, this, in this case, the target is a point. This point should be here. This point is, is a regular point in this space. Let me put this down. Yeah, this point here, this is like a gizmo. It's a, yeah, it's a helper. It's a regular point there. And they are trying to, to find this point all of the time. So, if I start to move this, you can see the timeline. They are trying to get the 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 main uh, the target. What's happening here? Let's check it out. Here they are colliding each other, and this is what happened. It's not a second circle. They're just colliding because I add the particle physics. If I if I delete the particle physics, they just go on and on and on, and nothing happens. And well, we can say it's working, but we need we need them to collide each other. Now they are colliding, but they are not sticking together. They are not being uh, binded somehow. They need to be uh, connected, and that is why we have the particle bin here. The particle bin. This is the tricky part. The particle bin automatically connects particles in a way they can't be separated. And this is very nice. You have this crazy effect, like a chain. And how is set up? The particle bit in setup automatically is by proximity. And I turn it off because I don't need the proximity. Otherwise, there will be, uh, I don't know, maybe this here to this would be connected also. So to not have any problems, I just turn off the family binding, I think. Yes. And I I, I, I check the bin to siblings. Automatically from the first line, uh, particle, uh, the particles understand one is coming next to the, uh, who comes first. You know, this is the first one and this is the second one. This is the third one. So those are siblings. And then we need to connect the first with the last, because let's say we start zero to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and white. This last particle doesn't have a a, a child. Uh, it has a parent. 
<laughs> another kind of parent. I don't know, he's a father, not a child. So you check this being the first and the last sibling, and they connect together. And here you can have the close uh, chain, and this is this is the main effect. Okay, so now let's add a uh, binding angle angle binding. What is this? This angle binding restrict the binding information to certain degrees or stiffness. So in the default uh, settings, it's very good for me because they they try to not bend too much, They're making some resistance to the effect, and this is very good. Now, what is happening now? They are in a line. They are in the in the X plane, but as soon they feel they can move anymore, they start to they they, they start to break the axis. So I add uh, I added a a limiter. This limiter you can limit movement of the particles X, Y, and Z. And of course, I turn Z to zero from zero to zero, so they can move anyway but x um uh, but uh, 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 i sorry i limited this set yes so they can only move they can only move the, the x and y so it, they must stay in that place okay after this i have a force noise a little bit of noise to make some random movements all the time it should be more organic after this, I have a, a slow, so everything is trying to slow down all the time, and it's like a, 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 a friction thing in the surface. After this, I have a surface force with another object, it's somewhere. This cylinder, I think is this one. Let me see the cylinder. This cylinder. At some point of the timeline, the cylinder start to move and it's affecting everything with a force. It's not colliding. It's just affecting everything like, like pushing. I think. Yeah, it's a push. Or, or yeah, it's a push because it's negative to the attraction. So it's the opposite thing. Yeah, that's what's going on over there. And well, after you have these simulations, of course, you can think the uh, the bindings as lines, as splines. So if you place a spline path and you build a spline based on particle bindings, what you will get is a uh, uh, what is it? A uh, tie spline. This this here. And yeah, for by default, the tie spline uh, comes with uh, another modifier on top to build meshes to the splines, but we don't need it, so I, I just deleted and I added the extrude. And then, well, you, you, you remember what I did uh, after this. Some things here, chamfer, weighted normals, and material by element, and everything is, everything is set up. Okay, after this, I of course added a floor, some lights, some cameras, some movements, and a render. Let's see how the render looks here. Um, this is Redshift. Uh, I really love Redshift for motion graphics. <clears throat> it's very solid. And no crazy surprise. Not really happy with the with the results. I used to use uh, V-Ray but i don't want to use cpu power so i switch to redshift because natively is a gpu renderer well that's it i hope you enjoyed this and i hope you can share some comments um like and i will try to post some breakdowns and experiments all of the time so if you want to see more of this just subscribe see you next time bye